I should probably uh, clean my van before I give it a tour. At the very least, make my bed. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and this is my dog Toby. And we live in a 2021 Ram Promaster that we built entirely by ourselves. We got the van back in February 2022 and spent about eight and a half months building it out until we finally moved into it in January 2023. If you want to see how I built this entire thing by myself, I encourage you to check out my van build series here on YouTube because I show you exactly how I get it done. Those lights are on. They are on. So now it's been about three months that we've been living in it and let me tell you, it's been the best three months of my life. We're going to do a very, 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 very long overdue van tour and let me be real with you for a second it's gonna be a very honest one a very honest diy van tour because let me tell you i had no idea what i was doing i had never picked up a power tool before in my life my very first time picking up a jigsaw was when i was building my subfloor let's get started and don't forget to subscribe First and foremost, this is a 2021 ram pro master 136 inch wheelbase 1500 um, can someone please tell me the correct order and how to spell that out? 2021 Ram Pro Master, 1500, 136 inch wheelbase. She is brand spanking new. I got her fresh out of the oven. At the time when I picked up my van, it was a seller's market and it's probably still the case now. I don't know. I'm not paying attention to that stuff anymore. To me, it seemed like it made more sense to purchase a new van as opposed to getting a used one because the price difference was barely a difference at all. Okay, so right away when the van opens, you're greeted with my bench. I actually made this very, very last minute. It was the last addition to the van because my bed is pretty high up and I need to be able to get up there without struggling. And more importantly, Toby needs to be able to get up there without struggling. He had already fallen, <laughs> fallen trying to get up there too, too many times before I had this bench. Yeah, that's that. In addition to being a stepping stool to get up there, my toilet is underneath as well as some storage. And obviously it's a bench, so I sit on it. <laughs> Over here is actually kind of important to point out. Ugh. Behind this power bank, I left one of the tie downs that came with the van just so I could tie Toby to it. What I do wish is that I kept one of them in the back as well so I could tie him up in the back. Yeah, this has been really important. So if you are currently building out your van and you have these D-rings and you're in the process of removing them all, think about keeping one or two if you have a pup. Also over here, I have my hatchet and my poop shovel. The toilet, I don't have it prepared for number two. I only have it prepared for number one. And to be honest, I don't think I wanna go number two in it. It is a nature's head composting toilet. Okay, so right behind me, I have a 50 liter Dometic fridge. There is a freezer compartment inside as well. Uh, it's never organized. I always just stuff things in there. I mostly just have yogurt. Underneath my fridge is my, uh, my shoe box, my shoe section of the van. I unfortunately have a lot of shoes, you guys. I'm kind of embarrassed by it. Most of my shoes are here. I have more shoes in between the wall and my driver's seat. And I also have a box of shoes in the back. <laughs> oh, and I also have shoes in the front directly behind me. Can we see it? So I like having my garbage just available right there. Having the garbage there makes it so much easier to throw things away, I suppose, but I know it's ugly. Underneath, I have two seven gallon blue tank things. Fresh water in the front, gray water in the back. I do have an extra one in the back of my van as well. So I'll always have 14 gallons at all times, around 14 gallons. Right now, the one in the back is empty because I just switched it. The pump that I have here is a 55 PSI C-Flow water pump. Now, it works great. I love it. I would not get a 55 PSI again, nor do I recommend it. I would probably get like a 35 PSI or just something lower than that because I feel like I waste a lot of water with it. Anyway, let's move right along. So here are my three drawers. They were the worst part of the entire van build. I'm gonna tell you that much right now. I hated building out these drawers and you'll see why. This bottom drawer, I usually keep my pans and just whatever I wanna fit in there. And right now it is not on the drawer slides. <laughs> So I just yank it out. And to be honest, it kind of works better now not being on the drawer slides than it did on the drawer slides. The second drawer, I have a mess as well. I have some fuel. I have my eating utensil stuff. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I'm a chopstick gal. I'll use chopsticks for literally everything. I eat yogurt with these dang things. Why? Because they're so much easier to clean and manage and store. That's why I have it. And I have one or two sets of forks and spoons, but I don't use it as often as I use my chopsticks. This is my favorite mug. And then this top drawer, <laughs> let's see if it works this time. Ah! Here's my top drawer. Yeah, that happens often. I have to pull out this table sometimes to get this to open, but this is like a junk drawer. So there's a bunch of random stuff in here that just doesn't otherwise have a home. I have to use 
eye hooks to close my drawers or the top two drawers because the bottom one's basically stuck so that they don't slide out when I drive. So this piece of wood came from my sink. It worked great <laughs> up until kind of recently. It kind of came disconnected. It is what it is. This is where I work. This is where I cook. This is where I do whatever things you need to do that requires a table because it fits perfectly where my bench is. <laughs> Speaking of cooking, well, I have two options, or kind of three options in a way. A most recent addition is this little contraption right here. I got it at $10 at Walmart, and it's been so nice to just plug in real quick and heat something up. It definitely gets hot enough to actually cook stuff, but it's pretty small, so I usually use it as like a microwave <laughs> when I have pre-made meals or just already cooked meals. Instead of pulling out my stove, I just pull this out and heat it up on here. Love it to freaking death. So happy I got it. Now my main cooking tool is this one burner stove. This is what I love most about this because I'm a, a little afraid of fire. This uses butane, but what's really cool, it lights itself. That's what I love the most about it is I don't have to deal with fuel and then lighter and then hope it doesn't explode. I store this as well as a folding table behind my driver's seat. So this is my butcher block. It has a live edge. I may have made a mistake when I built this. I made the cabinetry area below here 25 inches exactly, which was silly because my butcher block is 25 inches exactly. And when you're building tables, you wanna have a lip. It was a nice little mistake I had because what ended up happening afterwards really has been so beneficial with my whole van life journey thing. So to create the lip, I needed to make my counter just a little bit longer. I ended up putting a little dent back here of different walnut wood. I don't know what it is, but this dent is great because I'm able to like put stuff there and drive and it not tumble around. That's what that is. This is my sink. Stainless steel, really deep sink. I don't know how deep it is. I got this a long time ago, so I don't remember. I'll, here it is, that's what it is. Everything I have here, I'll have linked below. This is the faucet I have. And then here's the switch to turn the water on or to turn the water pump on. And then here's a switch to turn the lights underneath on. Yeah, this was, yeah, okay. I don't need to say anymore. Back here, I have, what do you call it? Like the sticker tiles in the back. I didn't do a really good job either right there. I mean, yeah, I know. I planned on using that temporarily and I wanted to put actual tile there. I'm vibing. I'm not mad about it. It is what it is. When the time is right, when it's time to replace it, I'll replace it with tile, but these aren't cheap. I thought they were going to be cheap. They're not cheap. Over here, I have my key holder as well as my hair tie holder and basically anything else I want held there. I use these clips to do that. Here's my little walking mug full of coffee. So just a little coffee break. Oh, that's been sitting there for a while. Now for the fun stuff. Here are my two cabinets. I only have one set of cabinets and we'll talk more about that later. The first one is electronic and some beauty supplies. And I have to put my head there to hold it up sometimes. This is my third cooking choice. It's a jet boil. I use it mainly to boil water and make myself coffee with this thing, pour over. So that's that, yeah. And then here's my little mirror that I use to do makeup or whatever. Next, we have this one. But this is all food stuff. So I've got seasoning sauces and pantry staples over here. Ow. If you can see here, this doesn't close. I'm actually happy about that too because I do enjoy being able to sit in my bed and reach in there and grab a snack if I need a snack. And nothing falls out, if you're wondering. Are we done with the kitchen? I think so. Up here is just junk. There's nothing special about that. I just throw things in there that don't have a place. I also put my shades up there when I'm driving. Okay, moving right along. We have this area. These are all my clothes. I only have one set of overhead cabinets. My other set I wanted to have up here, but I hated building it. So I decided to just get these instead. And the zippers are broken, but they work wonderfully. One, two, it's filled with clothes, but that's not it. I also have this little section with, uh, Toby, what do you call it? The uh, packing cubes, packing cubes, packing cubes full of clothes over there as well. Then behind my pillow here and underneath Toby's toes, that's my laundry. Underneath it are more clothes. As you can see right there, there are actually even more clothes over there. If you're someone that's been watching my videos, I identify greatly with it being an absolute disaster. And I hope this gives you a little bit more perspective as to why. Having to pull things out to find other things and the excessive amount of clothes that I have, that causes the chaos in here quite often. Yeah, right now, this is the cleanest it's ever been. So that's why I'm doing this van tour today. <laughs> here is my outlet, my one and only outlet and the inverter 
button. I'll get to my electrical later. I'm not gonna talk about that right now, but I have the outlet here where I charge stuff. <laughs> now, my bed. This is a full-size bed, minus one inch width-wise. It is 72 inches long, and for some perspective, I am 5'10", so I am 70 inches long. I fit here perfectly, which isn't the best thing. You want a little bit of space to be able to stretch your toes or whatever. I'm comfortable, so I'm not mad about it. I did pick this mattress up from Mattress Insider. They do custom beds for that RV life. Highly recommend checking them out if you need custom-made bed. Above me is a Max Air fan. It pushes and it pulls. On the sides here are my two bunker windows. Having my fan up here and my bunker windows here and having my fan pull air in creates this wonderful wind tunnel here in my bed that makes it so easy to be comfortable when it's really hot outside and it's not too far away from where I typically cook so if it gets smoky or whatever it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Behind me you can see the fabrics over here. If I take it off you see all that ugliness. <laughs> now this is a recent addition as well because I, I decided not to cover my back doors and my sliding door actually because I wasn't sure if I was going to install windows or not if I wanted to so I wanted to give myself the option to install windows. If I paneled this out and decided later I wanted windows I would have been left with a bunch of holes and just ugliness and residue. Yeah I opted to not do anything to this until I decided what I wanted to do and being three months on the road already I'll tell you right now I'm so happy I didn't panel it up because I do want windows. I desperately want windows. Being parked and not knowing what's going on behind me or next to me, it's stressful. When people park behind me, when there's a lot of things going on behind me, I want to be able to peek back there like what is happening. When I want to leave my van to take Toby out or whatever and I don't want people to know that I was in here, it'd be nice to like be able to look and see if anyone's out there real quick. I, I'm still capable of doing that just from the front or the side bunker windows. I think it'd be a lot more convenient here with the slider door. And plus I'd like a little bit more light in here because it is pretty dark. Oh, while I have you here, this is my toiletry bag. I don't have a home for my beauty supplies, like my toothbrush and my brush and my serums and all of the things. I mainly didn't create a home for it because I like to take this in with me to Planet Fitness. And I think it would be a massive pain in the butt to just have to pack and unpack every single time I go to the gym. Instead, I just keep it all in here. And when I'm ready to go to the gym, I take it with me. When I'm ready to do what I need to do here in the sink, I just pull this out and it's all in here. Highly recommend doing that especially when you don't have as much space like me. Even if you do have a lot of space, you're still gonna have to pack and unpack. And I do spend a lot of time at Planet Fitness to shower and what have you. So yeah, it's, love this. This is something that I think a lot of van lifers can relate with me with. There's a huge gap here between my bed and my door. Now you get used to it. You probably fall through there one or two times before you know your limits on the bed. I actually love it because I'm able to go back here and pull things that I need, like my gym bag. <laughs> I think we're done up here. Let's go to the front. Here's the front seat. So this bag is usually here, dangling there. Then I have random stuff here that sits here on the bed that I just don't know what to do with. Here's my garbage right now. It's usually, again, over here, but it got full. Yeah. This is Toby's seat. Look how cozy it is. You would think he'd spend some time there. When we're driving, he prefers being back here. So whatever. Underneath this is my other power bank and Toby's dog food. I actually really like this dog food holder. It collapses as well. So I feel like this has a lot of use for a lot of things other than just dog food. I wanna talk about these shades, actually. Okay, so these shades, I, wow, I don't remember where I got them actually, but this is where I got them. And I spent borderline $700 on them. I have three up here and two in the back for the bunker windows. Now, when I first got them, I got them back in July last year. So I was in the middle of my build. I hadn't really gone anywhere at all in my van because I was building it out. And for a while I was like, I regret buying this because they're just shades. If it's going to be uncomfortably hot in here, it's going to be uncomfortably hot in here. I think it could help deter the weather a little bit, but like not a lot of it. Now that I've been living on the road for three months, I can say I'm really happy that I bought them. Let me explain why. Not only do they black everything out in here so I don't get any sunlight in here if I don't want that. The insulation on it is phenomenal. While it does get uncomfortably hot in here, when it's hot in here sometimes, mostly right here, like this kitchen area that's really hot, but in the back, as I mentioned before, there's that airflow so I feel pretty cool back there. And then up front, it's actually really cool up here too. It gets really cool. It's, it's insane to me how cool it is up there when it was like 80 degrees that one day, which 
is amazing because then I just feel more comfortable with leaving Toby in the car when it's hot outside. And so I can go into the gym real quick for an hour or even two. Okay, so let's go to the back of my van to show you the garage. And then we'll talk about my electrical. So here is the back of my van, my garage space. It's a mess per usual. I have my extra water tank right here. I have a pile of firewood right here. Right here is my two person love seat. Tools, you can't not have tools. I have multiple locations of where my tools are at. I have two of these yellow containers. One of them I don't think I need. Also that noise was my inverter charger. I have this blow up mattress right here that people have made fun of me for having. I don't know why, like if you have space for it, bring it. And like you can lay outside in nature with the mattress. I have a bunch of just random stuff in here that I don't totally need. <laughs> Definitely gonna reevaluate my situation. All of my electrical stuff is here. Everything is Renogy by the way. So I have three 100 watt solar panels up on my roof. I have a 20 amp MPPT Rover charge controller. I have a 2000 watt inverter charger, which I regret having, we'll get back to that. And I have two 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries. If you wanna see how I connected it all, I do have videos on how I put everything together in my Vanville series. So make sure you check it out. I do have somewhere floating around a 40 amp DC to DC charger. The DC to DC charger, when if connected, would help charge my batteries via the alternator on my vehicle. My inverter charger here, it has two parts to play. It does the inverter stuff, so I'm able to have outlets and use AC energy in my van. And then the charger part gives me the ability to do onshore charging. Why do I regret getting the inverter charger? Because I don't need it. Plus, look how bulky it is. It is heavy. She is heavy. I, right now, am relying solely on solar and I'm not mad about it. So initially when I bought everything, I really wanted to have more than one option to charge my batteries. I didn't want to rely just on solar and I kind of still recommend that because anything can happen. You want to be able to charge your battery if one component isn't working. I haven't had any problems, dude, like at all. Aside from my batteries, I did have some issues with my batteries a while ago because they were actually defective. But since Renogy came back and sent me two new ones, they're 100% and when I say 100% I mean they're always at a hundred percent like all of the time and then while we're on the topic of electronics and stuff to do work to get internet access, I do have a Starlink and I use that primarily when I'm out in places like this, but when I'm in the city, I don't like pulling that out and being super obvious that I'm there. So I either go to coffee shops or I use the hotspot on my phone. I think I have about 40 gigabytes of hotspot ability on my phone. That gets me by pretty well. It comes with my plan too, so that's awesome. And yeah, what else do people talk about in van tours? Is there anything else? Look, it might not be the sexiest van. Let me look at this. There's definitely some parts of it that just need a lot of work. I know this, but it's livable. I'm really happy in it and I'm proud because I built it myself. So I'm really grateful for all the people who have encouraged me from day one on this journey and people who have been subscribed to my channel since the van build series and people who are subscribed to my channel now from just finding me yesterday or this morning. Like I'm grateful for all of you. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, do all the things and I'll see you in the next video.